Anyone got the time? Yeah, I got the time. Alright, cool. We got a, we got more time. Oh no, wait. Okay. Here is the R15. It was the first uh, Redbird style car. As you can see, it was just like the R15, except different windows, except square windows, and it's big. It's for the B division, the longer cars. It's 60 foot. Huh. It's the last car for a while to have the old IMDT. And the first car to have offset doors. Uh, now, if you remember, back in the older cars, the doors were right across from each other. There's a motorman's cab, and across from that, there's an extra seat with an extra window. Mm -hmm. To save space, and save glass, and make the doors bigger, well, that's what sure they did. They made the doors bigger, and then they kept the motorman's cab at the right hand side of both ends of the car. So, what happened was you have it offset. Doors here don't match the doors there. And this is the standard from now till the R42. Mm -hmm. After the R42, then you get the 44s, the 46s, and the 68s. With the, with the sealed off motormans. That and the doors are upside from each other. Lined they're, up. they're lined up. Pretty much till today, even on 60s. The only cars that are offset like this now are the A cars, like at the end. No, the intermediate cars of the R142s. Oh. The new technology cars for the IRT lines, the small ones. That's it. Everything else is lined up. Not really any. The only cars that ever got nicknames were the ones with fancy paint jobs. Back in the day, uh, there was a train called the Green Hornet. There was a train called the Bluebird. Uh, the World Fair car was also called the Bluebird later on in life. And the last paint job these cars got was called the Redbird. So there are no more other paint jobs you need Not really. Nope. It, it would only be have a nickname if it has some fancy paint job that the public really likes. And all the cars nowadays are so nice. Yeah. It's business. I don't think it's really that special anymore. Well, it is business because uh, even though it's not resistant to graffiti, stainless steel is stainless. So it's, no, it's, it's, it's not stainless, it's stainless. That's what it is. Stain less. Stain less. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's more resistant to graffiti. Yeah, easier to wash off. Yes. But the taggers come back with their own new paint that adheres. Paint or razors. <laughs> yeah, they can scratch. If they can't. That's the windows. So, I don't really know what's inside these uh, little cabinets. This is the only car that has these weird little cabinets. I don't really know. Mm. Look it up. Oh, you better, you better look it up. I can do this by looking. Oh no, no, never mind. I'm Laura. Yeah. I guess they will open these to make them to the doors. Maybe, yeah. But then why would they have these? Like so prominent. Again, maybe a lot of machinery for the doors. Who knows? Maybe it's a design. Who knows? Exactly. Oh, these cars were bad. Really? After 20 years, they began to fail. Only 20. The like standard life of a subway car should be 40 50, years. 40, yeah. The R44s were meant to replace these. The R44s and R46s were the new technology train. And then... 75 feet long, four car sets. Lord of technology, they came with their own speedometers, mm -hmm. they had one handle for both forward and reverse, but they had so many problems. R46s especially. Yeah, and the R44s too, just so many problems that they had to bring these out of storage, and these were so Broken. poorly maintained, in such poor condition, they were kept breaking, they couldn't even, the main problem with these cars, they couldn't reach their full speed. You so can only reach half speed for some unknown reason. Only reach half speed. So I've had that before. Awesome, <laughs> you know? And by the time they finally fixed the R44s for permanent operation, these cars are so beat, they're just falling apart. Yeah. Tell me something. What are these made of? Steel. Steel. Any of these parts are made of aluminum? Steel is the only... These cars made of aluminum was a 
five-car experimental train called the Green Hornet. It was painted green and uh, white. Mm -hmm. Do they have tears? No, it did not survive no. because in World War II, the army needed the aluminum, so they sold yeah. it. Yeah, it's crap. I mean, no. Uh, but it should be made. The trucks are made to go. Yeah. That's good. Lost them now. Oh, darn. Oh, lots of claws. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it happens all the time. Um, it wasn't just these cars that floated. They, they slowed down for the electronic reasons. The controls. Yeah. Every car that's made of steel went at the speed it's supposed to. Maybe it was a pressure problem. Could be. All cars do have air brakes. Some of them were, uh, the R44s are originally made with hydraulic brakes. That didn't go so well. I can imagine. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's not as responsive. Or, another thing, I forgot to mention about the World Fair cars. Older cars had pneumatically operated doors. And now, so viewers yeah. don't know what an actuator is. It's a cylinder with a piston inside connected to a rod. You pull it out, pull it in. It could be either pushed or pulled open by hydraulic fluid or air. Subway favors air. Yeah. And they open their, close their doors via pneumatics. Um, in the great overhaul of the late 80s, only the World's Fair cars were left with that pneumatic door system because they were overhauled earlier. Uh. So whereas all the other cars have different systems for opening and closing the doors that are quiet, the World's Fair cars are still in operation. You hear the puff of air push and close and then let go. Also, since they were overhauled earlier and less up to par, the batteries weren't changed, the original batteries. So whenever they jumped over a uh, gap in third rail, the lights would go out. Yeah, uh, that's the been on a few uh, 46s, I remember, also. The newer car, the, the other cars that were overhauled later, they had new batteries that wouldn't they, uh, last longer. They wouldn't let that happen. Well, it was just that they were old, probably, you know. I mean. Hey, look, broken light. Mm -hmm. Isn't that nice? Emergency handle, pulls out the window. Ah. Wait, what would happen if you were on an L with this? <laughs> Jump out the window. <laughs> okay. So now that we're done with actual subway cars, I think no, we're not. No. Got one more. <laughs> also, the R16, like I said, it was the last mass produced single unit. They didn't do that anymore. Here, we have R. As you can see, it was part of a double unit, but they severed it. It was part of a double unit, so on one side of the car, they, it, was no, it was pointless to make put signs and lights. But they cut it off from its other pair and fit it in here. It's pretty much the newer version of the R16. Aside from being a double unit, it's got a solid window on the doors. Simple cosmetic changes. You know, you regular square windows, it doesn't have those panels anymore. So that must be a mechanical change. Okay. That still um, has the um, uh, open. Now this is a more sturdier car. It lasted longer. The R30s, they actually lasted long enough into the 80s to be painted in the Redbird scheme. This is a newer version. Um, later on, they'd make the R32, which is a stainless steel version of this. Very mm -hmm. much. Double unit. Red, you know, the kind of shape, the same kind of shape. The lines on the sides and everything. Steel. Right. These are too heavy to put air conditioning into because there are steel. Air conditioning would make add more weight. Mm -hmm. That's why they they couldn't do it on this type of car. Not even the Redbirds and the RT because it's the same type of car. They're steel, too heavy for the elevated lines. Mm -hmm. So they converted the R thirty twos and thirty eights, forties. And 42s to air conditioning because they were light enough to handle it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, pretty much. I guess I guess the the cat that keeps the mouth out. Come on, guys. Where's